from New York. It's Saturday night. Oh. It's Saturday night. Let me play the, the Den intro real quick. The Deluxe Edition Network, also known as The Den, is an incredible podcast network that offers a wide variety of entertaining and informative podcasts. With a lineup of shows covering various topics, such as interviews with a wide variety of guests, history, music, relationships, true crime, and so much more. The Den provides content that caters to a diverse range of interests. The hosts and guests on the Deluxe Edition Network demonstrate a deep passion and expertise in their respective fields, making each episode on each show engaging and thought-provoking. The network fosters a sense of community by encouraging listeners to interact through live chats, social media, and forums, creating an inclusive environment for discussion and sharing opinions. With its commitment to high-quality production, the shows in the Deluxe Edition Network continue to captivate and entertain its ever-growing audience. Whether you're a podcast enthusiast or someone looking to explore new topics, The Den is a fantastic platform to dive into and uncover fascinating insights from experts in their fields. The Deluxe Edition Network is the home of independent awesomeness. To find all these great podcasts in one convenient location, head over to DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. That's DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. Well, now it's time for awkward silence. Well, <laughs> uh, considering we're missing someone already. <laughs> and we don't got anybody watching us yet anyway. <laughs> well, at least no one watching live. They could be Not watching yet. on the YouTube channel. I'm watching on the YouTube channel. That's why it says there's one viewer. <laughs> I wanted to see how it lines up. It looks like it's like um, delay recorded, like it's a little bit behind. <laughs> okay. Yep, there he is. I guess you should have told him 7.15 to jump on. Yeah. Tell who? Hey, you. What's up? <laughs> You're Don't late. worry, nobody, nobody's on yet. Anyway, <laughs> I'm late by what two minutes? Just, get, this is my normal. Just time. as, just as I feared, <laughs> there's nobody in the fucking chat. Anyway, so yeah. How are you, fellas? It's been a while. Yeah. Mike I and I see. were just uh, talking about we're not going to do a recording this Thursday since we're doing this one tonight. I'm just going to re-edit it and release it on Tuesday as an edited recording. Cool. Um, And then Mike is on vacation next week, you said, right? No, the following week, the 20th. Oh, the following week. So we can record next week then. Yeah. So next, next Thursday, I said we'll do our, our season finale since Mike's going on vacation a week after that. And I thought about doing the career of Alan Rickman uh, Mm -hmm. because it's also the 25th anniversary of Galaxy Quest this year. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm like, uh, it's two of my favorite movies with Dogman and Galaxy Quest with Alan Rickman. So I'm like, uh, Mm -hmm. that'd be a good topic to to cover. Hello, Alan Rickman. Hello, Alan Alan Rickman. Um, Don't forget you're picking up Bye. the right. <laughs> Professor Snape. What do you get when you add Wolf's Bane to the lace swing flies? Let's see. No one in chat. Yes, that's what we get. Nobody in the chat. Come on, people. How's um how's Kate feeling? All right. She went back to work. She drove herself in today. She doesn't have any restrictions anymore. So good. You know, I mean she's still a little uncomfortable from time to time, but otherwise she's kind of back in the swing. Let's 
So, Kev, you got a beer news is good news for us tonight? Yeah, I guess I missed a couple of uh, local breweries that uh, walked away pretty well from the um, World Beer Cup the other uh, the other week. So. Reminding reminding people that we are live now to come join the chat. Oh, my phone's blown up. <laughs> <clears throat> Be me. I don't know. Wednesday season two is a uh, beginning production. It's mm-hmm. going to have Christopher Lloyd and Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, I saw that earlier today. I also saw a trailer, Mike, for a Lego movie uh, coming out later this year. Uh, that's it's kind of like the uh, multiverse of Star Wars Lego films. Oh Jesus! And it includes a Darth Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> Look kind of funny. I didn't see the name of it though. Misa, only one of two. It said something like, uh, Misa gonna hurt you now. <laughs> you should not know the powers of the darker side. What's in the box? Hey, Lee, what program were you using to write scripts when you were writing scripts? Uh, the program I was using is not really available anymore. Oh. It was called, uh, it was called uh, Celtics. Okay. Um, the last time I tried to use it, it wasn't like really adapting anymore. So uh, I just use uh, Google Docs now. There is there's a, a there's, free one. There's a, there's a template on Google Docs too, I think. Oh, is there? Yeah. There's a uh, there's a free one available on at least Apple um, in the Apple Store called uh, mm-hmm. Slugline. Okay. And uh, that's what I've been using in school with my students. Kind of works out well when you do your uh, slug lines. You just start with the interior, exterior, and then it starts mm-hmm. to bold it, capitalize it all. You can jot it down. As you uh, type the dialogue for your characters, as long as you hold the shift key down while you're typing your character's name, it will um, save the character's name into the memory so that it will auto auto generate when you start to type it, and then it mm-hmm. will center the dialogue. <clears throat> That's kind of like what the program I did I used would do, but um, again, they don't have it anymore. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna hit the. Uh... Intro again for the Deluxe Edition Network, and then I'm going to do the special intro that I designed for tonight, and hopefully some people log on in the meantime. I know Jason and Kathy from Ohio's Eve just uh, messaged me to resend them the link, so maybe they might try to hop on. Okay. And then I told Mike that Donald from You Mean a Movie disappeared. Kev, I think he got tired of me asking for pizza. (laughs) So You Mean a Movie is no longer a thing? Yeah, I haven't seen a new episode from him in almost a year. Wow. Poor Donald. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to hit the uh, promo real quick, and then we'll get started. The Deluxe Edition Network, also known as The Den, is an incredible podcast network that offers a wide variety of entertaining and informative podcasts. With a lineup of shows covering various topics, such as interviews with a wide variety of guests, history, music, relationships, true crime, and so much more. The Den provides content that caters to a diverse range of interests. 
The hosts and guests on the Deluxe Edition Network demonstrate a deep passion and expertise in their respective fields, making each episode on each show engaging and thought-provoking. The network fosters a sense of community by encouraging listeners to interact through live chats, social media, and forums, creating an inclusive environment for discussion and sharing opinions. With its commitment to high-quality production, the shows in the Deluxe Edition Network continue to captivate and entertain its ever-growing audience. Whether you're a podcast enthusiast or someone looking to explore new topics, The Den is a fantastic platform to dive into and uncover fascinating insights from experts in their fields. The Deluxe Edition Network is the home of independent awesomeness. To find all these great podcasts in one convenient location, head over to DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. That's DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 150 live. It's alive. <laughs> yeah, I hope uh, I hope anybody who tuned in got to see that that intro that I just put up there because I worked really hard on that. <laughs> That's a good scroll, man. Good scroll. <laughs> that was a lot of work. <laughs> uh so we are in episode 150, as I said. We're calling this one uh the plot hole strike back. We are Films and Fermentation, a movie and alcohol podcast. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. We're three friends who like to talk shit about movies while getting shit-faced. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and Wookiees, to another episode of Films and Fermentation, where we travel to a galaxy far, far away and deep dive into the Death Star-sized plot holes scattered throughout the franchise and try to do so in less than 12 parsecs. From mysteriously reappearing bad guys to boggling familial revelations to the mysteries of, hey, Mike, Jedi, Chlamydia, grab your lightsabers and join us as we navigate the treacherous asteroid field of Star Wars plot holes. <laughs> yeah, right there, Mike. <laughs> Catch you by surprise. A little bit. <laughs> you speak lies, sir. Surely there can be no plot holes in such a well-manicured as a, a franchise such uh well-written dialogue and <laughs> well thought out plot structures yes no battling between directors and between productions nothing like that <laughs> no. <laughs> don't forget you can drop us an email at films and fermentation at gmail.com or visit linktree.com slash films and fermentation to find all of our social media and podcast links, I uh, went on Linktree earlier today and I uh, fixed some links that weren't working on there, so everything should be up and running again. You can become part of the Films of Fermentation family by supporting us on Patreon or buying our merchandise at teespring.com. Mike is uh, showing some of our merchandise right now with his t-shirt. Get that lovely looking Films of Fermentation, uh, Fermentation t-shirt at teespring.com. We are also a part of the Deluxe Edition Network. The Den. You can find out more about us and other podcasts that belong to the Deluxe Edition Network by going to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. 
while you're there, check out the podcast of the month for the month of May, The Steve and Crypto Show. I also like to mention that we are now on Reddit. If you search for r slash films fermentation pod, that's films fermentation pod on Reddit, you can join our Reddit uh, conversations. So, gentlemen, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? box? (laughs) Well, Uh, hold up. I got to, before we get to find out what's in the box, I got to say, hey, welcome to DJ Scoob from the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. Uh, who said whoop <laughs> in the chat there? <laughs> Hello, for joining DJ us. Uh, thank you for joining us here. So, uh, as I mentioned in a teaser in the last show, Mike got uh, gifts for me and Kevin. These little blue boxes here. We were told not to open them until the broadcast, and I was very patient, and I have waited. And I did not open mine, so we're going mine, to open I them now. We've been the shaking. It. I'm trying to figure out here. Trying to figure out what songs Mike might have put on my mixtape. <laughs> Salamander. So I'm this going to open quite mine. Obviously from from yours. Go ahead, open them, boys. I'm opening them in now. It's just a mm-hmm. little. <laughs> uh, uh, look at that. Uh, uh, to, in the box. Perfect way to take number. my drinking habit mobile with me. <laughs> It is a flask. It is a flask. Oh, a my flask gosh. flask that has our logo on it. Pickled Road and Fermented Ave. It says Pickled Road and Fermented Avenue is one of our one of the logos that we use. Mr. Does yours fully say Avenue? Mine just says Ave. Yeah, Fermented Ave. Oh, okay. And Pickled Root. <laughs> and Pickled Root. Pickled Root. Pickled Root. So, thank you, but Michael. Mike, it's missing something. It's missing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I love you guys to fill. You can imagine if he did fill it for us. They've been sitting in a box for a month. Like, <laughs> would have it's been better age. Barrel age. Barrel <laughs> age. Yes. What if it leaked be... stuff? Jeez, that would have been burst. Mm-hmm. Gonna have to have that ready for the next episode. Is this available Scoob. in our store? It says nice. <laughs> Is this the? Did you buy this from our store, Mike? No. No. <laughs> Uh, our, yeah, store does not, our store does not have that on there. I have to get it specially made. So, our store. I bought it from our store if I could. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep my apple juice in this. <laughs> is that what you call it? My very special apple juice. Is it, that, is it called your teacher's aid? Teacher's aid, yeah. Teacher's aid, yeah. It's called the summertime juice box. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of juice boxes, what are we drinking tonight, gentlemen? Mike, since you gave us this wonderful gift, why don't you go first? Okay, I am drinking a Dreamweaver wheat from Trogs uh, Independent Brewing, uh, 4.8 alcohol by volume, uh, 55% wheat. Nice wheat beer. I like wheat. They're out of Lancaster, aren't they? Are they? I think I know they're local. <laughs> I want to say Lancaster is their uh, city. Well, Mike tries to figure that out, Kev. What are you drinking? <laughs> Hershey. Uh, Hershey. Hershey, okay. Yeah. I'm close. Uh, I'm feeling it, boys. It's 80 degrees outside going up to the high 80s tomorrow. I just came back from Virginia Beach to uh, one of my cousin's weddings. And uh, we brought back some libations, if you will. Uh, so I'm just going to start with this uh, Lime of the Party. It's a Key Lime Pie Ghost. It's from New Realm Brewing Company. They have a couple locations in the Virginia area. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. And then I have from um, Back Bay Brew House. The Orange Crush IPA, which is an Indian pale ale with orange. It's 6.1% alcohol by volume. Uh, And this is also out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. So I have two new ones. Um, The Key Lime, uh, the Lime of the Party is, let me see. Can I find the alcohol by volume? It should be pretty close. It's 4% alcohol by volume. Key lime juice, sea salt, vanilla bean, and coriander. 
And if I polish those off too quickly, my summer continues with a good old longboard from uh, Island uh, Longboard Island Lager from Kona Brew Company. So, that's a cool white. <laughs> Scoob says, "Hey Kevin, Mike, nice to see the faces that go with the voices." Hello, DJ Scoob. Thanks, he knows DJ my Scoob. he knows my face already because he and I spoke <laughs> recently. <laughs> uh, the episode in which I uh, appeared is out now as well. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts. Um, I am drinking. I went lo-fi tonight. Uh, I figure we're two days removed from Cinco de Mayo, so I'm just drinking a, a margarita. Nice. Uh, that I'm uh, normally I go uh, uh, with uh, Cuervo with my margaritas tonight. I'm doing some 1800 tequila. Ooh, it's in my, my nice my howdy glass. You went you went you went high class. Uh -huh. Low five, but high class. Mike, anything special happen this week? This week in film history. In 1997, science fiction film The Fifth Element, written and directed by Luke Benson, starring Bruce Willis and Mila Djokovic, is released. Then the most expensive European film ever made. If Mike has any kryptonite, it's Russian names. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Mila Djokovic. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, we got Kathy from uh, All Hallows Eve on the uh, on the chat now. Kathy, uh, she says, "Long we time miss you guys. No see, guys, we miss you guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we keep hoping to hear from you guys and 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 find out if you're doing anything new. And you know, we had so much fun. I actually just re-listened to the episode that we did with them on the House of uh, a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. I needed to be aggravated and have a, a good laugh at the same time again." <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of the fifth element uh we talked about this before in other episodes about um uh how uh, uh this was supposed to be like the next star wars and kind of never like took off even though it's still like it's it, it was a hit and, and it's a movie i love to watch when it's on never quite had that that tread to it like the star wars films had yeah DJ Scoob says to uh, Kathy, we miss you guys in the pod group. <clears throat> so what's the other one you got there, Mike? In 2011, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Ties, directed by Rob Marshall, starring Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz, premieres opening weekend makes 3, uh, 350.6 <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> million you know, dollars. Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, I think it should have made thousands, but you know. Uh, this was which one was this? Number seven, eight. I don't. I, I, this is the fourth Four. one. I, I lost fourth track. One. I remember seeing the first one in the theater with with you and Adrian, Mike. Yeah. And I remember yeah. seeing the second one, I believe, in the theater with you and Adrian. Maybe. And then I definitely know I saw the third one in the theater with you and Adrian and Katie. Kev, I think you might have been with us too. I think I was there for one of them. Yeah, and uh, and that's the last one I saw was the third one. <laughs> yeah, <pretty laughs> I, one. I think I seen this one out on you know one of the networks. Mm -hmm. This is the one with the mermaids, I think. <laughs> I may have seen this one in the theater. It's probably a date. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> nothing, nothing stands out. And yeah, I know 2011. Was... I, I kind of you know I don't remember 2011. There was a fifth one with. Um... Uh, Blackbeard, I want to say, was was the villain in that one. Um, yeah, wasn't there one with like the? Was this the one with the Fountain of Youth? The one with this Penelope one Cruz? was I, the one I think. I know one was like the Fountain of Youth or something. I don't know. Mike, you have any must try beer? Craft destination stores this evening. I do. It's called Moose Drool Brown Ale. Moose Drool. Mm, Moose Drool. Yeah, from Big Sky Brewing Company. How many craft breweries have a brown ale for their flagship brand? Moose Drool has always been Big Sky's top seller, and for good reason. The near black brown ale is balanced, smooth, and comforting, yet approachable. Notes of chocolate, a hint of coffee, and a touch of pecan pie sets the tone. American made in an English Brown style ale. 
There you go, boys. Mm. Moose mm. rule. Moose rule. Sounds like something that should be out of a brewery in Maine. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything else to say to that. <laughs> he said, uh, well, Scoob, says, it's, it's, Scoob says it's Bullwinkle's favorite beer. I thought it was Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> Moose. Uh, and Squirrel. And Squirrel. Let's see here. Uh, I'm losing track because there's so much going on on my screen right now. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to Kevin's segment. Beer news is good news. Hopefully it's good news. He always makes a liar out of me, but we'll see what happens. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And stop. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. Let's go drink some beer. Beer. Luckily, nobody can see me dancing to that behind the banner. So. <laughs> you and me both. Ahead, man. <laughs> well, boys, the news is the news is not good. The world is out of beer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> lies, that's, that's lies. My teacher last. told me. <laughs> <laughs> this I, is a follow-up to our last episode where I talked about the uh, World Beer Cup that happened. At um, the Craft Brewer, Brewers Con- Conference and Brew Expo uh, that took place in Las Vegas on April 24th. So uh, the follow-up is just to kind of give a shout out to some local breweries here in our lovely state of New Jersey. Um, four of them in, in the area, and at least two of which I know I've been to, uh, Walked away with some pretty nice, uh, pretty nice medals, if you will. So the Craft Brewers Conference and Brew Expo of America held award ceremonies for the World Beer mm-hmm. Cup, the most prominent beer competition in the world, in Las Vegas on April twenty fourth. And four New Jer- New Jersey brewers came home with big smiles on their faces. Winning breweries included Bone Saw Brewing Company in Glassboro. Nice. I, we we uh, you and I met. Right? Yeah, we've been. Well, there. You were. I, I've too, been right? there a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they won a gold medal for their American style brown ale called Lone Squirrel, and Kane Brewing Company, located in Ocean, they took the gold for their wood and barrel aged strong stout, Dripping Maple, and a bronze for their Belgian fruit beer, Field and Oak Golden Raspberry. Also taking the gold were Ship Bottom Brewing in Beach Haven for their Golden or Blonde Ale Mermaid Brown Ale. And another one I've been to out of Wildwood called Mud Hen Brewing Company won the gold for the Scotch Ale We Heavy Wilson, a global competition that began in 1996. The World Beer Cup celebrates craft beer and increases consumer awareness of beer styles and flavor profiles. The competition recognizes brewing excellence in more than 100 categories. So there you go. <clears throat> I asked Kathy how she and, uh, and Jason were doing. She said they took some time off the rest, but they are going to be back very soon. And I yeah. said, nice. That'll be nice. cool. Um, I had to take my Star Wars Hawaiian shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought this. Like an extra big size, and then I put it on, and it wasn't as extra big as I thought, <laughs> and it was like cutting off the circulation in my arms. <laughs> oh, well, that ain't good. <laughs> so that was beer news is good news, brought to you by Newsly.me. Newsly.me is an audio super app for iOS and Android. The reason is to you in the natural human voice. Stop scrolling, start listening. Go to Newsly.me today and use the promo code Atten for a minute, and get your first month premium subscription for free. We'll be right back after this quick break from. Coffee Brothers. I love a good beer, but right now, I can use a good cup of coffee. Have you heard about Coffee Brothers? Oh, yeah. They're that coffee company out of New York, right? Well, they're more like a coffee wizards of New York City. They source these amazing seasonal blends and single-origin coffees. It's like a flavor adventure in every cup. And get this. They roast everything in small batches. None of that mass-produced stuff. It's like each bean gets the VIB treatment. VIB? Very important bean. Hmm. Sounds fancy, but is it worth it? Definitely. 
plus they're a two-person team. I mean, that's dedication right there. Two brothers, one mission to caffeinate the world. And right now you can save 10% on your order. I mean, who doesn't love a good discount? All right, you've convinced me. Let's get some Coffee Brothers now. Coffee Brothers, where every cup is a sip of perfection. Save 10% on your next order with the code FNF10. That's FNF10. Cheers to great coffee. I don't know who the guys are in that promo read, man, but they got some sexy voices. <laughs> One of them sounds like oh. he's in a hole. <laughs> what kind of hole? <laughs> a plot hole, because that's what we're doing next. Hey! hey, hey, hey look happy. at that tie-in. That like segue. <laughs> So we are going right into our main segment here. We are looking at, uh, so we're revisiting a previous topic. We did uh, a while back uh, an episode called Filling in the Plot Holes, which uh, turned out to be our most popular episode, our our most downloaded episode, uh, according to Buzzsprout. So we decided for tonight, since we usually do a, a Star Wars episode around this time of year, that we would revisit. Star Wars and plot holes by doing a little filling in the plot hole Star Wars edition, or as we called it at the top of the show, the plot hole strike back. Now, in order to try to uh, <laughs> quell my my usual habit of going overboard, even though I still kind of went overboard with this, I decided okay. we were not going to look at any of the expanded uh, Star Wars universe shit. So none of the the cartoons or the animated movies or television the live action series or anything like that. Dude, that's cool because none of them have plot holes. They're all on the mark. <laughs> they're they're all really in the plot holes that we talk about. And I want to point that out now, Mike. I don't want to hear shit about the Bad Batch, all right? <laughs> there are plot holes that even the Bad Batch can't 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 fill in. <laughs> no, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. Yeah, don't no. ruin number one for us yet. <laughs> Look, man, Dave Filoni would never allow a plot hole to exist. Nor John Favreau. No. Uh, So we decided for this that the rules are we are only looking at the nine canon films, episodes one through nine, and the two spinoff live action movies, uh, Solo and Rogue One. Uh, I kind of put them in order of what I thought were the most glaring plot holes, and we will uh, we'll try to fix them if we can, Um, or at least try to find logic where there may not be any. I don't know. (laughs) We'll see. DJ Scoop says coffee. <laughs> yeah, coffee and beer. That's our thing. <laughs> Carbonation caffeine. Maybe that should be the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got 24 here. Uh, Mike pointed out a couple pre show, but I, I added them to some of the ones that were already on the list. Uh, they fill in the plot holes like a shovel with no head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no one. So number 24 on the list here, we have a top 24. Uh, I have a few video clips for some of these, but I, I'm not going to do one for everyone because the show will go on forever. Uh, but number 24 here is from attack of the clones, which would be episode two. No one in the Jedi order apparently knew about the clones on Camino. <laughs> Look, my whole thing with the prequels is they introduce characters and with no, you know, um, Backstory, like we're what, what, we're we're supposed to know who um, Master Sifo-Dyas is without having, you know, it's like who's who the hell's Master Sifo-Dyas? You I'm know? glad you remembered the name of the guy because I yeah. I couldn't remember the name, and I'm a Star Wars <laughs> fan, and I was like, I'm, I know that there was like this Jedi Master who ordered the clones. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and then like it, deleted like, it from the uh, archives. Yeah, deleted from the archives. He lost the invoice, all that shit, mm-hmm. and and, <laughs> and like. Clones! And Somehow Obi Wan discovers them when he visits that fat alien at the fucking space diner. <laughs> <laughs> I always love the scene where he visits the guy at the space diner, Dexter or Dexter or whatever the hell his name is. And I think to myself, you McGregor filmed this on a green screen and had no friggin' clue what he was filming when he did this. What the guy would look like. Yeah, what the guy would look like, what the scenery was, that there was going to be. You know that the guy would look like an alien form of George Went, you know, with a mustache. 
Yeah, Four think arms, it was, like, he's talking to him, he's pulling his pants up at the same time. It was going to be a robot waitress who was like Flo from Alice. Like, kiss my grits. It was like, <laughs> it was, it was bizarre. Boards. Uh, so this one is like a weird one because it's like, all right, so the explanation is somehow, <laughs> somehow seems to be the explanation a lot. <laughs> somehow Obi-Wan Kenobi discovered the clones and that's how we got them in the Attack of the Clones. Uh, number 23, uh, in Empire Strikes Back, the Empire, uh, a Darth Vader in one scene says, did you disable their hyperdrive? And the, one of the captains or admirals who he ends up killing at some point says, uh, yes. Why not just, um, you know, disable the whole engine? Yeah, disable the whole fucking ship, you know? Because it wasn't in the script, Lee. It was not in the script. You put a boot on it, okay? Just like they did in Solo. You put a boot on the Millennium Falcon. They put a boot on the Falcon and Solo. I don't remember I that. Yeah, it was in an that's impound that's yard, and it was. It, yeah, <laughs> that was the first time they get to it. It's booted. Yes, it that's how much I think like, Kevin and I saw that one together. That's how much I remember of it. <laughs> it is booted. <laughs> so they should have put a boot on it. I guess. Yeah, I think the explanation here is is they were following them, um, or something like. He, well, was, uh, I mean, not an empire. Empire, they weren't following them. No, were they like trying to find Luke or something? And it was at the end where Luke was uh, escaping with him. Yeah. They yeah. Were to... Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's it's as DJ Scoob said, it's a it's a space boot. It's a space <laughs> boot. It's a plot hole that's filled in like a shovel with no head. <laughs> Here is one of my favorites, uh, number twenty-two. I have a video clip for this one. This is Maz Kanata in The Force Awakens. Uh, she somehow got a hold of Luke Skywalker's lightsaber from his chopped off hand and in a scene where she gives it to Finn. But not the hand. <laughs> yeah, not the hand, just the lightsaber. That'd be fucking creepy if she just had this like little like, <laughs> like the little, hand shriveled, like, mummified little hand. shriveled mummified Luke hand. Like, <laughs> no, no, the lightsaber, yeah. <laughs> so she hands the lightsaber to Finn and and uh, <laughs> I almost said Harrison Ford. Well, this Harrison was explained. Ford, I mean, Han she, got, she got it at an auction. Yeah. <laughs> they were liquidating Cloud yeah. City, and that's some of the junk that just got, you know. They, they sold it room. right next to the ice cream machine that that guy that's was right, running the out ice cream machine. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's see this clip here yeah. and the explanation for why uh, she has the lightsaber. Where'd you get that? A good question for another time. Take it. Find your friend. Okay, so here's the here's the problem with it. Uh, it's a good story for another time, and it never happens. <laughs> another time never comes around. Another time never comes around because, as we said earlier, it's too many damn directors in those. Too movies. many damn directors. Mm. Too many battles between the directors and stuff. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's a shame. <laughs> I would love to have known how she got it. It's, it well, I would, been, I would love to have known in the, the last Jedi terrible. what the hell she was fighting and what was going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. would have been a better subplot, the second movie, than Finn and what's her name going to the casino. Oh, yeah. Rose. Finn and <laughs> yeah. Rose. Yes, that's who it was. That whole <laughs> casino subplot is is a, is a plot hole in and of itself. That's, that's a fucking <laughs> plot sinkhole. Like, that's that's should never have happened. That was them trying to do another Cloud City, and it wasn't as, nearly as good. Update, I'm halfway through the bottle of 1800 tequila. And another <laughs> plot hole. Why does Maz Kanata's eyes look like buttholes? <laughs> I think the explanation is because she's a thousand years old. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My granddad was like 90 years old. His eyes were pretty sunk into his head. They started looking like buttholes, too. So I don't know. <laughs> It looked like blue nuts. Uh, moving on. <laughs> this is both from uh, the New Hope and and <laughs> Kathy says no kidding, laughing my ass off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> laughing, my, laughing my butt no, no, hole no. off. No, 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 no. <laughs> plot wormholes. <laughs> plot wormholes. We got mm. from from DJ Scoo. Yeah. So um, <sighs> shit. Uh, where am I at? Number 21. Jedi Order. The Jedi Order mythology. This is both in A New Hope and Force Awakens. The Jedi become a myth within like 
two decades. Like, shouldn't it take a little longer for something like that to become mythology? I don't know. In two decades, people don't remember, you know, landlines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In two decades, Ancient. people don't remember that they own Tamagotchis. Those You're talking about are dead now. two specific pieces of technology that really don't affect like the overall universe. We're talking about a fucking human being, Luke Skywalker, who people like forgot about in 20 years, and a religious order. <laughs> Yeah, Scoop says it's like thousand years or something. A religious order that ran the galaxy since you know uh, my favorite video game of all time, uh, Life of the Old Republic. Millennials can't remember what happened last week. Come on now. All right, it's not a millennial bashing episode, Michael. <laughs> Just because you're from the greatest generation. That's right, the baby boomers. No, I'm not a boomer. Damn it, I'm a. <laughs> okay, boomer. All right, there. Mike just turned seventy. Um, what was I saying? You guys. Uh, uh, we were talking about. I'm halfway through a bottle of tequila. This is going to be a great night. <laughs> um, uh, well, I, yeah, I can't, mythology thing. It's just I always thought it was weird. Like it was just like it didn't bother me with um Star Wars mm-hmm. as much as it bothered me with A Force Awakens. Yeah, it didn't bother me with New Hope too much just because it was the first movie we got. Like the first Star Wars right. we got. So we didn't know how much time there was between Revenge of the Sith and New Hope. And then, you know, in between that, uh, there's all the Order 66 stuff and Rogue One and all that. So, I mean, there is some fill in the blank. But, like, yeah, The Force Awakens, it just doesn't seem like it was enough time passed for it to be right that much of a mythology. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> number 20, Phantom Menace. Uh, First off, they elect their royalty. Like I never oh, heard of the Naboo. Uh, Naboo. Hold on a sec. We got a we got a message here. It's uh, it says Kathy's name, but it's Jason. Uh, he says, "Hey guys, this is Jason. I'm loving this." And Kathy said, "Sip, sip, pass the tequila." <laughs> Kathy, I think would really like the new ro- the new realm lime of the party, uh, key lime pie ghosts. It is a delicious beer. Uh, from Virginia Beach. So, I'm yes. um, I'm I'm imbibing tonight just because I know like tomorrow the middle schoolers are going on a field trip, so my <laughs> my office is going to be very quiet tomorrow. <laughs> we have state testing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so she's not only just elected royalty; she's 14 year old elected royalty. Yes. I don't. don't most I don't trust elected what they're doing. What's that and, and she wasn't the youngest elected royalty, she said in one of the films. I don't trust electing the kids in my school to be class president. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza every day for lunch. No homework. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's Naboo politics, I guess, you know. The Naboo are smart people. Yeah, the Naboo they politics will explain one of the plot holes that comes up later in this list. So. <laughs> wow, there you go. Um... Number 19 from the prequel trilogy, R2-D2's Rockets. They broke after that. Mm-hmm. They never put them back? No. No. <laughs> like, why not feels them? expensive, dude. <laughs> you can't just go all astromech, let me fill this shit up with uh, petrol. I would start complaining about, like, yeah. you know, droid equal rights, man. Like, I, I have the right to health care. Like, repair my rockets. And that shows up <laughs> in Solo, right? Does it? Yeah, Lando's uh, Lando's droid chick fighting for equal rights for droids. Uh, yeah, there you go. DJ, DJ Scoob, I'm going to call him by his name, Jesse. Uh, he says, what? What? With a double question mark. What? Yes. Are we saying what because of the rockets or what like? <laughs> or what because of the droid fighting for equal rights? <laughs> He's saying what to my my uh, incoherent ramblings as I get deeper and deeper in this bottle of tequila. All right. Excuse me. Maybe they were banned by the Empire. Uh, after the, he's them, talking you know? about the rockets. Yeah, like what's with the rockets? Like, yeah, they just kind of disappeared. They got uh, banned, you know, by the Empire. You know, I do remember when he used the rockets for the first time. I was in the theater and I said, "What the fuck is this?" And the <laughs> person by president. Out of me because like, that would have made a nice, 
<laughs> that, was, that, was, that was nice and easy so you wouldn't have gotten to the swamp if you had rockets <laughs> then, you know. Yeah, so. right. So, yeah, I, I went, what the fuck is this about? And the birds of army went, I have my kids with me. I was like, well, they should know this is bullshit, too. <laughs> <laughs> The rockets were first used in uh, Attack of the Clones, right? It Attack was not clones, used yeah. in the Phantom Menace. Okay, it's it's in the scene at the very beginning where they're um, uh, they were like trying to like escape from a ship or something like that. I don't remember the exact scene, but I remember him using the rock. No, it was the Geonosis it was, factory. It was Geonosis factory. Yeah, because yeah. there's also that scene where like three PO is doing things that his body really shouldn't be able to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> too much carbon emissions. It was banned. Too much by carbon the emissions. It was banned for carbon emissions. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was banned. Uh, number eighteen. Um, again, expanded universe aside, because I know this was explained in like Clone Wars and Rebels and all that. Shit. Prior to this movie, yeah. Prior to this movie, but Darth Maul's appearance in Solo. Uh, now I'm putting it in there as a plot hole for the casual fan who never saw the animated series and is watching Solo and going, I thought that guy died in Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I remember turning to Kevin and I'm like, listen, I know he comes back in the, in the series, even though I've never really watched the animated series. Mm -hmm. Like, I know he comes back and I know some of the story and all that, but even I was like, so he's the one behind it? Like, I did. <laughs> I think so they were really expecting to do a Solo too. Solo was a shit show in production. Mm -hmm. I mean, it changed more hands than, um, you know, a casino. Ultimately, so, ending up in Rod Howard's hands, which we yeah, did cover yeah, the and he episode. did the best he could with it. We should just thank our lucky stars, Tom Hanks, and end up in it. <laughs> well, I had said to you afterwards, I was like, I enjoyed it for what it was because mm -hmm. I went in with no expectations. Right. Like if you went in with low expectations or no expectations, it was enjoyable, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, but I didn't need. I really didn't need the backstory. Um, I, I yeah, like it, it, I just felt like it was sort. It felt like an unnecessary movie afterwards. Other than uh, Donald Glover's performance as young Lando Calrissian, which I would have watched the three hours of that. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> Tom Hanks's dark side. <laughs> Darth Hanks. <laughs> We've never seen the animated series, so yeah, what would that is that would be a heck of a plot hole, uh, Jason and Kathy said. So yeah, like I've never I, I, I consider myself a pretty big Star Wars fan and I've never watched the animated series. But I've I know enough about them and I've read enough about them like outside of the show that like I, I understand where some of the stuff comes from, but you know, casual fans. Uh, same thing from Solo as well. Uh, Han speaks uh, the Wookiee language fluently, apparently. He says a little. It comes out yeah, of nowhere. A little. <laughs> when he's I can see, like, if he was, to him. you know, he was stuck in that cell with with uh, Chewbacca for a little while and kind of learned the language by osmosis. But like, he kind of comes in just like knowing, you know, the Wookiee language, which I'm embarrassed to say I know is called Shri Wook. <laughs> 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 Something I learned from hey, Knights hey, of the Old Republic. Tell the truth. You're not embarrassed that you know that. I also know that J Jabba the Hutt's little guy uh, is a Kowakia monkey lizard named Salacious B. Crumb. <laughs> now that's something to be uh, embarrassed about. Yeah. <laughs> Remember your, your mother in law's friend uh, was like, uh, why would you know that? <laughs> I don't know. I just enjoy it. <laughs> Uh, number 16, Leia's ship orbiting Scarif at the end of Rogue One. So, at the beginning of New Hope, you know, Vader, uh, uh, they invade Leia's ship. He's asked her where she's going from. She says she's on a diplomatic mission from Alderaan. Um, but she had just prior been <laughs> the Battle of Scarif. That's how she got the, uh, the disc from, uh, uh, the soldiers and all from, from, mm -hmm. Jin Erso and all them. So, I mean, that I love Rogue One. I think it's a good movie. Uh, but that is kind of a plot hole. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she was there with the other rebels. Yeah. They're probably I mean, get, just providing cover or, or they assistance. Didn't, they didn't get the license plate. So. No. <laughs> it also is another like little bit of a plot hole thing there. It's like he's. He's so badass in that last scene, Darth Vader. 
mm-hmm. slicing dudes in half. And then, you know, at the beginning of New Hope, it's just like, you know, uh, David Prowse walking around <laughs> awkwardly in a giant suit. <laughs> Force choking people. Force choking They're going people. to tear their ship apart. <laughs> Bring me the prisoners. I want them alive. <laughs> you ever hear one with Arnold's voice? Like, <laughs> want to tear the ship apart. <laughs> Uh, the next one I have here is the holdover maneuver from the last Jedi. I have oh, really quickly one. before you go into that one, mm-hmm. it was a fan made film, but the, the battle on on in the New Hope between Obi Wan and Darth Vader, which would definitely line up with how badass Vader was in Rogue One. Mm-hmm. You know, if you see that fan made film, it's amazing what they were able to do. Yeah, that's a really cool video. I wish, you know, of all the things that they made in the in the re-release, that would have been <laughs> something I would have been enjoyed seeing. If you want to talk about badass Vader stuff, think about in the original, the, the, not the original, but back in the the, the the prequels, the lightsaber battles, how they were all, you know, fancy mm-hmm. and everything. Then mm-hmm. him and Luke, he should have kicked Luke's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Without even thinking he's about it, out of practice, man. They didn't have people to battle with all the time. You know, he was like the emperor was too too old to spar with at that point. It was <laughs> Darth was throwing his punches because he knew who Luke Sky- Skywalker was. Uh, <laughs> Yo, sister. All right, so the next one is the holdover maneuver, and I got a little video for this one just because I love this scene. I think it's so fucking badass. Is preparing to jump to light speed. It's empty. They're just trying to pull our attention away. Pathetic. Keep your fire on the transports. <laughs> on my command. She's running away. No, she isn't. No, I remember seeing a plot hole there. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing that in the theater and thinking to myself, God damn, that's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't until like I thought about it a little bit afterwards that um <sighs> if that worked so well, why didn't they ever use it again? <laughs> and someone would have to die doing it. And they why not use like a uh, uh, like a remote controlled vessel or something or or build weapons that could be shot at light speed or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> now they they bring it up again in Rise of Skywalker, and they explain it away as it's a one in a million chance that that would work. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> is, aim it the right way. Sixty percent of the time, it works every time. <laughs> uh, Luke number fourteen. Luke is hidden on Tatooine, but they keep the Skywalker name. <laughs> It's a little easier well, to figure it's out. Because everyone knows that Anakin hates sand. It's <laughs> core right. it's everywhere. It's, rough, it's coarse. It gets everywhere. He, he would, never, he, he he would never, never go back to Tatooine. He's never going back. Okay. <laughs> All right. You filled that plot hole in really good. I don't think we have to talk about that one anymore. 
Uh, number 13, the Empire should have been more suspicious of Gale and Urso in Rogue One. Yeah, you killed the guy's wife. You, he, for all he knows, you killed his daughter, even though she she lived. Um, and then you force him to build the Death Star. Don't you think, motherfucker, would have put a weakness in it? <laughs> <laughs> a little too much trust in that guy after you killed his family. Well, chances are they were looking over his work. It's not as if he just got a free pass. And who would have thought a exhaust port just you know. <laughs> Two meters wide and I two know. two meter wide hole in a. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. It's not even big as a wall. All right, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number twelve from the original trilogy and other oh from the prequels as well because Mike, you brought this up. Uh, Darth Vader and others uh, such as Lars Owen uh, uh, don't. Recognize C-3PO? <laughs> Anakin built him. <laughs> he was on the he was on the evaporating farm. He was on the farm, yeah. The moisture farm. The moisture yeah. farm. But nobody seems to recognize him. I guess, you know, all droids look alike, I guess. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, all, they, they have models. That, I mean, look, you saw the one on uh, in Cloud City. That flipped off uh, the 3PO when he was looking around. So that you know, he's just another he's just another protocol droid living in a protocol world, <laughs> and he is a protocol girl. No, um wasn't his uh, memory wiped from yes, uh, well he doesn't remember anything, but nobody else remembers him. Well, he's just another protocol droid. <laughs> With the same <laughs> name as C three PO. Dave hasn't changed. It's it's a it's a model number like R two D two R two or two whatever the fuck they're. I gotta yeah. stop drinking. He's R two model. His name is D two. R two D three. R two D four. He's a yeah. Um. <laughs> number eleven. Uh, this See is mostly this is the original uh, DJ Scoob. What's that? Thanks for hanging with us. Oh, hey, Scoob. Yeah, thank you for hanging out with us, man. We appreciate yep. you stopping by. Um, you know, spread the word. <laughs> Tell people to check out the episode. We're going to edit this and re-release it uh, again next Tuesday. So, you know, others can check it out as well. Uh, number 11. The Empire has too much reliance on life-scanning systems. Mostly the New Hope, but also the whole trilogy. Um, they scan the ship where they tr- they go to scan the ship but then Luke and Han knock out the guards and take their uniforms mm-hmm. and nobody bothers to further check the scans no. or see what the results were <laughs> it's the ship or, scan, the ship is scanned there was no, li- there was no life forms you know in the in the escape pod <laughs> <laughs> i was going to pull up a clip from family guy and i forgot to do it where it's from the Family Guy Star Wars special, where the the, sh- the the escape pod's flying away, and he goes, "Wait, hold your fire." There's no life life uh, life signs in that pod or whatever it says, and the guy goes, "What are we paying by the laser?" <laughs> <laughs> um, number ten. Oh, I, I'm repeating myself here. I didn't even have to do this because it's the same one. They never scanned the money. The same one. I missed that when I was making the list up. Uh, number nine. Ray becomes a powerful Jedi with limited training. Do the new trilogy. Hey, well, so did Luke. So did Luke. So did Luke. But I mean, Luke yeah, did train with Obi Wan for a little bit. He did train he with Yoda. Yoda. He did learn how to move things by himself without any training. He was he the was son of, of Anakin. <laughs> so he was yeah, and she strong. was, you know, she was from, you know, she help. was nothing until J.J. Abrams decided to rewrite that fucking <laughs> storyline. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of uh, Kathy's favorite Family Guy episodes. Jason says <laughs> that episode is called Blue Harvest. <laughs> Blue Harvest. <laughs> yes, the Blue Harvest. Um, but yeah, like she's. Uh, I've seen her described online as like a, uh, I think it's a Mary Sue character or something like that, where she just kind of knows everything automatically. I still enjoyed Force Awakens. I thought it was okay. I didn't. It was the other two that I had you know, some issues with, but yeah, 
Right. <sighs> Number eight. Princess Leia remembers her mother, Return of the Jedi. Well, who does the next Most, Mostly is? feelings. You know, mostly feelings. Mm -hmm. I remember her being sad. Of course, she was dying when you were oh, born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your father had just broken her heart to kill her. I could fix that plot hole right away. She doesn't die of a broken heart. She dies of a fucking fractured windpipe because he choked her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. She could have lived and just kind of been like with Leia for a little bit on Alderaan and then like mm -hmm. died while she was young and then no, you know, the no, Bail to Organa raises her, you know. <laughs> I feel like that would have been a fix on that plot hole. Yeah. Um, <laughs> number seven. Obi-Wan Kenobi claims to have been trained by Master Yoda in Empire, but of course we learned in the prequels that he was trained by oh, oh. <laughs> Who was trained I by I gone. He was Who trained was by Liam Neeson and his particular set of skills. <laughs> who was trained by Count Dooku, who was trained by uh, Yoda, so therefore <laughs> so, six so by process of Yoda? like, you know <laughs> Process of elimination account. All right. <laughs> this is the next one's the best one. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> Midichlorians. <laughs> Midichlorians. That's all I gotta say about that. Or as Mike calls it, Dead Eye Chlamydia. Dead Eye Chlamydia. Hold on, here we go. I got I did find a, a video that actually explains Midichlorians, so I'm gonna show that real quick. Master Sir. I heard Yoda talking about midichlorians. I've been wondering, what are midichlorians? It's heroin. I believe that's as good an explanation as any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Mike was expecting a chlamydia to say. It's, <laughs> it's meth. It's heroin. <laughs> now, I think I've talked about this before. Uh, if Lucas had not sold Star Wars to Disney and had made the episodes uh, eight, nine, or seven, eight, nine himself, he was going to do. <sighs> A trilogy about the Wills, which were the beings that lived on the Midichlorian. So it was going to be like a, an inner space uh, of Star Wars. Thank God <laughs> he stole it. Yeah, that's the only that's the only good thing that came out of his song at <laughs> Disney. Oh uh, well, Mandalorian. Yeah. So, <laughs> number five, Luke Skywalker keeps forgetting he has the Force and randomly remembers. Oh. So. Right only Mike knows I, he has something that he he doesn't know he knows, you know. <laughs> so Mike and I were talking pre-show about this and, and Empire, Mike, what's he do? He throws the rock. No, no, Empire. Oh, Empire. Oh, Empire, he's he's hanging upside down in an ice cave and he draws his saber towards him without anybody ever teaching him how to do that. So he pulls the saber towards him using the force. But then in Return of the Jedi, when he's facing the Rancor, instead of using the Force to like pull the gate down on the Rancor, he picks up a rock and throws it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but what you don't know is that he used the Force to guide his throw. <laughs> he used the Force to guide his throw. Uh, I mean, uh, the I Force understand. allowed him to be the Randy Johnson of throwing <laughs> rocks and, and, um, hitting, and hitting Rancors. But then that in the course. very next scene, he's doing like backflips off of like airships in the, near the Sarlacc pit and fighting yeah. with the lightsaber. Yeah, you see, you guys remember the, the the force kick scene? The force kick scene. He's fighting one of uh, Jabba's henchmen on one of the airships. Mm -hmm. And if you watch it closely, he kicks the guy, but completely misses him. But the guy falls off the ship anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And people online have called it the force kick. <laughs> Call that just a botched maneuver in WWE. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, number four, the OG trilogy. Darth Vader doesn't sense that Leia's his daughter. Nope. I mean, nope. 
Yeah. You got to feel like there's got to be some like rumbling in the forest, you know. Yeah, well, Here's what I want to know, and this is the biggest plot hole of them all, and this kind of leads to this plot hole. All the advanced technology they have in the Star Wars universe, light speed and lightsabers and ships and lasers and robots and all this shit, they didn't have the technology to tell that she had twins well before she gave birth. Her <laughs> she she her wanted insurance. it to be a surprise. Her insurance didn't cover that part. <laughs> she was a senator, goddammit. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> she didn't even know she was, was cut back until she had a full stomach. It was cut back about, to um, the war. How about um, couldn't you like sense it too? Like, there's twins in there. If you have your Jedi, like, how did the hell? I don't know. Anyway, uh, number three, Attack of the Clones, Jar Jar Senate promotion. <laughs> Nothing says promotion like being a fucking idiot. Well, you know what? It does make sense. He's a politician. It makes total sense. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Never he mind. I'm taking that one off the list. The he, is, he is the Sith Lord. Come on. <laughs> Darth Jar Jar. Darth Jar Jar, man. No, I'm uh, taking that one off the list. That makes total sense. He he failed his way to the top. <laughs> Number two. Leia always knew that Luke was her brother? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Somehow. Somehow I always I knew. Especially yeah. when I stole your tongue. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> the force is strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. And my sister has it. Yes. It's you, Lee. I know. Somehow. I've always known. Flash. <laughs> Even while she had his, her tongue down his throat. <laughs> yep, exactly. I didn't know that you that you downloaded the uh, helium edition of the yeah. <laughs> It might the just be the is very strong in my family. <laughs> I have it. My father had it and my sister had it. It's, it's Mark Hamill doing his Joker voice as as Luke Skywalker. Um, yeah, that was uh, originally this plot was there was going to be a love triangle between Leia, Luke, and Han, and Luke was going to have a sister, but she was going to be introduced in Return of the Jedi. And for some reason or another, Lucas decided to just eliminate that plot line, make Leia his sister, and now we're all confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, you know, incest is the best. Put your brother to the test. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> and then that brings us to number one. Number one, the greatest line reading in the history of cinema from Rise of Skywalker. Somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Somehow. Somehow, somehow, Palpatine returned. We're not really sure how. <sighs> and I know we're not talking about the animated shows, mm -hmm. but between that and Battlefront Two, you can see the the wheels in motion. A little so bit. What he was the, trying uh, to do the Mandalorian, where you see the Snoke and all that. But like, yeah. here's the other problem I have with this: we just had that whole discussion about how quickly. Luke and the Jedi Order became mythology. Yep. Shouldn't Palpatine have been mythology at this point, too? <laughs> well, we forget, we forget no, about that. No, no. That rule was an iron fist for like 20, 30 years. Come on. Mm. Yeah. I mean, histories, uh, uh, politics, and, and, and governments are always documented to the teeth, but uh, religions, they just, you know, kind of. It's like, away. It's like. It's like it's like this the um Mark yeah, Anthony it, speech. And if, if history is uh written by the victors, then wouldn't you know everybody know anyone. that the rebels in you know had a Jedi on their side? <laughs> yeah, but like I say, it's like the Mark Antony speech and it, it's yeah. Caesar. This is going back to the previous one. I thought it was funny. Yeah, did she know that when she was sucking his face? <laughs> <laughs> that you know. 
the good that men do are left it's always the evil that men know are, 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 is left behind so i believe mike evil. was trying to quote julius caesar <laughs> I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do the quote. But Friends, but, Romans, country mean, lend me your ears. Yes. I'm here to praise Caesar, not to bury him. The evil that men do lives after them, but the good is often turned with their bones. So let it be. There right. you go. That's the one. <laughs> that's why. That's why Shakespeare is on my microphone. Yes. <laughs> uh, but it, it breaks my up, you know. <laughs> so uh, I thought this was a, a fun thing we had last week when uh, when Kevin brought up. Uh, Lamb by Christopher Moore in relation to our talk about dogma. <clears throat> so I threw in a little book recommendation again this week because I thought it was a cool thing. Um, if you're a fan of Star Wars and you're looking for a good book series to read, um, I could easily have said Dune for this, but I decided since the movie has just come out, let me go with something different. If you're a fan of the Star Wars uh, trilogy, I suggest you check out the Ender's Game trilogy by Orson Scott Card. Ender's Game was one of my favorite books from when I was a kid. I taught it. I taught it a number of times as uh, as a teacher, and uh, it's one of my favorite novels. Now there's like 20, 20 books or something in the Ender's like uh, uh, series, but the original trilogy is the best, and it's Ender's Game, Speakers for the Dead, and Xenophobia. So if you're looking for a good Star Wars adjacent trilogy to check out, check out the Ender's Game trilogy by Orson Scott Card. Mike, do you have any beer trivia or history for us this evening? I have, some, I have a beer fun fact for you, boys. Ever see someone drink a beer during a television commercial? You haven't. Because by law, alcohol consumption on national television is prohibited. Actors in beer commercials can hold one, open one, and pour one, but they cannot drink one. <laughs> and is that just in television commercials? Because my thoughts go to cheers. The whole you Yeah, you can't, you can't drink it. No alcohol consumption on television, period. I remember mm. George Went saying in an interview one time that whatever he had to drink on Cheers was terrible because it wasn't beer. It was some sort of like non-alcoholic Tea. kind of stuff that they would drink on the show because they weren't allowed to drink actual alcohol. Apple juice. Yeah, probably would have been better. Anyway, how are your drinks this evening, gentlemen? Very good. Very good. I would definitely Fine. say mine's very good considering I just killed half a bottle of 1,800 tequila. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like dream weaver wheat i like wheat beers my uh lime of the party was pretty darn good my um orange crush ipa i'm not a huge ipa fan so i wasn't digging this so much but it, it's, it's tolerable and i guess i'm never i'm not gonna have to get to you longboard you are saved for another day <laughs> you always crack it over drinking afterward i could <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so that was, uh, some good drinks we had tonight. Mm -hmm. Mike, again, thank you for my, uh, wonderful flask that you got me, my pickle root and fermented Avenue flask. Mm -hmm. Again, I thought it was a mixtape. I'm a little disappointed it wasn't, but I'm happy about the flask too. <laughs> uh, so thank you for joining us tonight for episode 150 live thank you to anybody who joined us in the chat kathy kathy jason to dj scoob jesse as i know him outside of the podcast business uh for joining us tonight in the chat for anybody else that was out there who didn't join the chat but who was watching us live thank you for joining us we hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as we enjoyed recording it for you don't forget you can drop us an email at films at gmail.com or visit linktree.com slash films and fermentation Find all of our social media and podcast links. Support us on Patreon. Buy our merchandise at teespring.com. And don't forget that we are now on Reddit as well. You can find us at Films Fermentation Pod on Reddit. Films Fermentation Pod. You could also go to deluxeeditionnetwork.com, the den, find out more about us and the other podcasts on the Deluxe Edition Network, including the podcast of the month for May, the Steve and Crypto Show. Um, don't forget to stop by the Crossroads between Pickle and Ferment it for our next episode. So this episode is going out live tonight. I'm going to uh, edit it a little bit and re-release it on Tuesday next week as a regular release. And then we are going to be recording our season finale next week, which will be recorded uh, uh, next Thursday and released the following Tuesday. Our season finale, episode 151, the season eight finale, is going to be a look at the career of Alan Rickman. <laughs> so uh, don't forget to stop by the crossroads between pickle and fermented next time around for episode 151 
the season eight finale, the career of Alan Rickman. Kathy and Jason say, great show, guys. Thanks for the invite. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Jason. It's been a while. Look forward to seeing you uh, guys uh, in the podcast community again at some point. Um, anyway, uh, again, thank you all for joining us tonight for episode 150 Live. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. You've been listening to the Films and Fermentation Podcast. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. All right.